today <laughs> I'm feeling like a dead fish at the fish market. Well, the smell isn't quite as bad, <laughs> but the condition of my body is comparable. But I want to make this video today because we are celebrating a really, really great party here on my YouTube channel. We are celebrating 40k subscribers on my channel and of course I want to continue this party. And after several days in my bed, I really feel that I want to talk to you and be together with you and celebrate this party. But to be honest, <laughs> when I said in my first video, <clears throat> oh, excuse me please, that I can't handle parties so well anymore, I didn't mean this, yeah, so I hope you can, you can handle my condition that I have during this video. But I want to share something with you today because I have something for you that I have never had before on my channel. So that's like a premiere and I want to do this today. So I hope you can handle my weird voice and I hope I can do this together with you today. So welcome to part three of my 40k subscribers party here on my YouTube channel. Several months ago, I created something, you can already see it there, that is something really, really special to me. And it is actually something that I have never done before. So that is a premiere as well. And this special thing, I will show that to you in a second, of course, will be available in an auction. So I will run my very first auction where you can get this thing if you want. That is going to be an Instagram auction. <clears throat> and I will go into detail about how that whole thing works in a second. But first of all, I would like to show you what I have created. I will give you a flip through because it is some kind of a journal, a book or something like that. I want to show you that thing in detail and then after that I will tell you how you can get this thing if you want to get it within this auction on Instagram. So let's turn the camera and let's dive into this thing and let's talk about it. So let's talk about my Mundala tunnel book. <laughs> Here we go. This is more a book or an album than a journal. But I think it doesn't matter how you call that. As you can see, it has not so many pages. Like, for example, a normal junk journal would have. But this is something really special to me for several different reasons. And while I talk about that, I will switch off my lights so that you can see that this book also has some lights. So you can see this moon there is glowing and this way you can see this tunnel way better than without the lights I would say and that was actually a relatively big challenge for me because I have never done something like this before um, I when I created this I had not made like a journal or a book with lights and that was a challenge <laughs> and when you challenge yourself with something I think you can get a really good um, feeling for your own boundaries, for your own skills, and you can learn a lot about yourself. And when I created this, um, I want to be really honest to you. And I want to um, tell you also why this is um, something special for me personally. And that is also the reason why I'm putting this into this auction. Because when I created this, I also learned um, a lot about the people in my life, especially about the friends in my life. I learned that some friends are not really friends. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that others who I thought are like, you know, people I know suddenly became friends during the things that happened while I created this. 
I don't want to go too deep into the details behind this, but I want you to know that this is something really, really special. The idea behind this book was to create something that reminds to a mandala, but around a moon. And then I came to the idea to call this Mundala. You know, mandala is something that is round and has a really regular pattern around. And I wanted to create a mandala around the moon. So that is then a mandala, isn't it? <laughs> so here on the front, you can already see some die cuts I have used. So all of the die cuts I have used for this book are by Zizix and Tim Holtz. There are some older die cuts, like for example these little guys here, and also some newer die cuts and also embossing folders. Um, this here, for example, is an embossing folder from the last um, Halloween release, and also some other dies that are in here come from the last Halloween release by Zizix and Tim Holtz. But as I said, I have mixed that up with some older dies as well. When you see this, you can see at first glance that here are a lot of die cuts used and you can imagine that it is impossible for me to tell you each and every name of the single pieces I have used here. I will put some photos to my blog and there you can find the names of the die cut sets that um, have been used here so that I don't have to tell you each of the single names here but you can you know sit down have a cup of coffee check the photos and if you want to know for example where this mushroom comes from or these little um, botanicals here then you can find that on the photos and you can find the links to those single die cut sets that were used here um, this moon from the last release I mean from the last Halloween release by Zizix and Tim Holtz is not a real circle so it's like a little bit wonky and that is something that I absolutely love about this die cut by the way I like that this moon is not so regular but that also makes my mandalas around those holes not regular and that was something that was really really interesting on the one hand to do that <laughs> in the beginning I thought oh that is easy to create something like this because then um, if if the circle is wonky, it um, doesn't have to be so accurate, ac accurate, but that is a mistake. <laughs> I mean, I thought um, if the circle is wonky, um, the mandala, it's not so important that it is accurate, but it has to be really accurate, otherwise it looks absolutely terrible. So that was, this was a really, really hard challenge to, to get all of these pieces into the right place. But to be honest, I'm totally proud that I could manage that. And I'm so, so happy how this turned out. And I've tried to make like a little scene on each page. So this is like more autumnal. It's not so Halloween-ish. Yeah? Even if here are also some beds. Can you see these little <clears throat> wings here? These are actually the bed wings. You, you can't see the body because it's hidden below those layers there. But um, they are peeking out here because I thought that this is a really nice addition. And this is like mm, a forest page in autumn. A forest in autumn with mushrooms and the leaves are getting from green to brown. I mean... <laughs> That's autumn, isn't it? And um, I also wanted to have something that is going through the whole book. And there are those white elements here. You can see these little flowers here. And they, uh, you will see them on the other pages as well. So that we have something that goes through the whole journal. But each page has a separate theme. So let's go to the next page. Here it's getting even more brownish and more autumnal, I would say. And I have used a lot of die cuts that you would probably not expect in like an autumn themed uh, journal book or on an autumn themed card or something. 
For example, <coughs> can you see these little guys here? Here in the background behind the cats, this is actually um, a really big flower die, which I have cut and cut out from um, these colored cardstock pieces so that we have those autumnal colors here. And also um, with these little guys here, these flowers, um, they are so versatile. I, I just, um, I don't know the name of this set, but as I said, you can find that on my blog. I have put some grid paste on each of these little dots. And then I have put some oxide ink on top to make this really, really orangey and brownish to give dimension to these little guys makes them also really sturdy and on the other hand i wanted to have that really yeah like pure autumn and these little cats are already a sign that it's getting closer to halloween these cats are layered you can see they are relatively thick and perhaps you might wonder how i did that these are actually several layers of um, black craft stock um so i have cut out several layers please don't ask me how many layers this uh is oh uh, perhaps four i guess this i i guess it's four layers um so that they look really thick and dimensional and as you can see i have distressed the edges here a little bit just with a sanding disc you know black craft stock and also colored cardstock you can sand and then you can see the craft paper through that. And I think that gives these cats even more dimension. And they are playing around here a little bit in this autumn theme. Um, perhaps you might wonder <laughs> how I made this background. That was perhaps a little bit uh, annoying for my neighbors. <laughs> can you see all of these little damages here? I have made those with the texture hammer. You know, that's this thing, um, this little hammer, and um, it has these little, I don't know how this is called, but, you know, uh, I don't even know this word in German. <laughs> but with these little thingies here, I've hammered to the page so that it gets this really, really interesting texture. And I really like this, especially for autumn projects that are not so, like, typically autumn because this reminds also to dirty snow do you know what i mean and that is something that especially um, here in austria can happen in the time during autumn and winter so sometimes it snows relatively early in the year and then um, when the weather is getting again a little bit warmer then the snow gets dirty and this is something yeah, that totally reminds me to that. And it, of course, gives a really nice texture for the background. So then <coughs> we can go to this page and you can see it's getting even browner. And also the weather is getting a little bit like more muddy. And it's the time of the year where you sit there with your tea and you have a scarf and, you know, everything is cozy. And I also wanted to get like this wet feeling of this time of the year to this page. <clears throat> and I've tried to um, achieve that by adding some texture paste translucent to the background. So this background is basically made with some oxidings. And there where the um, translucent texture paste is, the color of the background changes so here's no additional other color than the oxide color from the background but the texture paste makes that we see like the ink color of the oxide ink do you know what i mean i i think you know this effect and this is uh, not only a great resist technique of course but you can also get a really deep dimension to your page because when you look, I think, ah, my camera, how can I, which angle do I need so that you can see what I see? Hmm, perhaps like this. If you now look, for example, to this little plant here, uh, um, at first glance, 
um, and especially in a video or on a photo, you would think that this is a die cut as well. And that it is like the first layer and then the other die cuts are cut out and glued on top. But this is basically only texture paste. Um, there's no stencil available of this design, but I made my own stencil. I've just taken um, this die cut. So that is basically the same like you can see here. I mean here it's cut from paper. And I have then taken the die cut and I've just cut out um, several of these and the other shapes from a piece of paper and used that as a stencil to be able to um, put the texture paste to my uh, project here. And that I think is a really nice additional way of using die cuts. I mean, what I'm trying to say here is if you have a die cut set, you can of course also, um, yeah, like, <clears throat> how do you say that in English? Um, utilize those several die cut um, shapes for other things like for example stencils or you could stamp with them I have also done that on other projects um, and that is really really interesting in my eyes and gives a really nice additional layer here <sighs> I'm so proud <laughs> and perhaps you might wonder why um, these buttons are here I want to quickly explain that if you perhaps want to try something like this uh, by your own so as you can see on each of the pages I have this relatively big button here um, I think that gives not only something that is handy to flip the page and it is interesting I mean in my eyes it's interesting with all of this lace stuff here to have this button here or these buttons here but um, those buttons also have a function and that is that the distance between the pages here on this side of the journal is exactly the same like here on the spine. I have made this like accordion fold technique. I think you know that. Um, and, you know, fold a piece of paper like an accordion and then I've glued the single pages to this accordion folded piece of sturdy paper. And I have a distance here between the cover the first page and then the first page the second page and so on and the last page and the cover and this distance you need here as well to make sure that when you look at it like this that this distance is all the same otherwise it will be um, very uh, close to each other here on the right side and you would see that here that looks absolutely uh, terrible in my eyes so I've used these buttons to get the distance uh, between the pages. <clears throat> okay, so then here are the cats. Here are these little, oh, I love, I really love these little guys here. And um, do you know what? These little guys here, they are just so versatile. I never thought that I would fall in love with that set so much. Um, I have used some grid paste to alter them and to make them look like metal and a little bit rusty. And also here on the cover, I have tried to get a patina to them. And look how how different they look if you add a little bit of medium to them. By the way, I've used bat wings here as well to make them, you know, a little bit different. So this... This layer here is actually not part of this set with these little insects, but these are the beds from the from another set. And, you know, I've combined those. Oh, my brain. <laughs> my brain is just not working like I want it. Um, okay, so um, let's go to this page. <clears throat> this is actually the only double page I have in this whole book. So you can see this scene here goes from here to here or from here to here, <laughs> depending on how you want to see that. And um, here I've played around with one of my absolutely favorite sets by Zizix and Tim Holtz, and that are those silhouette birds. But I wanted to have them look a little bit more Halloween-ish because, you know, here it's already Halloween. Yeah, We started in like autumn with a little bit green leaves and mushrooms and that stuff, and then it got 
like browner and browner and browner and now we are here in the black uh, world <laughs> and this is like Halloween and we have reached Halloween evening let's say. This background I made with oxide inks on watercolor paper and to be honest I'm totally proud of this background. This was basically relatively easy. I've just um, put some oxide inks to this watercolor paper with a little bit of water to make it you know flow a little bit better and then I've lifted some of that uh, off with a paper towel to get these lighter areas and then I've taken a sanding disc to sand around this hole to make this like glow of the moon and then I've arranged all of these little birdies here around <clears throat> and they all have bat wings as you can see. I've just cut the bats apart and then I've placed the wings there to the birds where I thought it could look like it was planned like that, you know. <laughs> and I really like how those came out. I've also used some white bats as you can see there. Mm. I thought perhaps that's an idea. Uh, I've not seen that anywhere else. So I thought, why why do bats always have to be black? I mean, you know, if you need contrast in your projects, uh, cut them out from white paper. Why not? Um, and as you can see here, I have also used all or nearly all of the leftovers I had from this whole cutting process. Um, you can see here are a lot of single pieces used and I have cut a ton of die cuts and the leftover pieces I have sewn together to create these uh, back sides of the pages. Here you can see only a little bit of that but if I flip to this page for example you can see it probably better. So I have taken all of those negative pieces that you would like normally throw into the trash can. I mean, people who don't know how to craft, <laughs> throw those pieces into the trash can. We, of course, save them because we can use them for something like this. So I've taken all of those leftover pieces, those negative uh, pieces, and I've cut squares out of them and then I have sewn those squares together. You can see each of these backside pages is made out of squares and you can see the shapes of the pieces I've cut. And perhaps you are wondering why this is like so distressed. I've just taken some distressed paint and um, a brayer and I've rolled the paint over this to make this look like more harmonious um, because of course all of these single squares had different colors because I have cut the single positive pieces here out from different colored papers yeah I hope that makes sense so I wanted to have like a similar color scheme on each of the back sides <coughs> oh, excuse me please of this book and in some areas you can even see little scenes on the back sides here for example with this cat I mean that is not a coincidence I have thought about that to place her here and I also thought about how to cut her so that it looks like she's coming out here from these little plants here on the left and I think that looks really cute and um, what am I trying to say here don't throw away those negative pieces just keep them there will come the day where you need them and if you need an interesting back side of a page use them just cut them apart sew them back together and then you have this <clears throat> and uh, the sturdiness of the page comes because this is basically two layers yeah so I have cut the negative shapes and then below that there are some other papers yeah I have used some backdrops that I had left over and some other older Tim Holtz papers from older paper pads so that you can also see some nice um, additional patterns through these holes from the pieces you've cut yeah so that's this I, I'm really in love with this book <laughs> so I'm hoping 
that you like this as well. So the auction for this book is happening on Instagram. Below this video in the description box, you will find a link to the auction post on my Instagram. So you can just click that and then you come to Instagram and then you can bid on the book by leaving a comment below the post on Instagram. Please have in mind that you place the US dollar amount in the comment section of the post. This whole thing is open internationally, but please only list the US dollar amount to avoid any confusion with the bids. Yeah, so if you write a number, for example, let's say 50, then everyone knows that is 50 US dollar. Yeah, um, and please make sure that you enter a new comment if you want a bid and not a reply. Yeah, so just press new comment and then you can bid. And in your comment, please be sure to tag the highest bidder with your bid. Meaning, if you, if you see that, for example, at Junk journaler. Let's call the person like that. The person is called at junk journaler on Instagram has already bid. Then you write at junk journaler and then you place your own bid. Hopefully that makes sense. The auction is going to be open for one week from today. And after the auction is over, I will contact the highest bidder and we are going to clarify the details. If the highest bidder isn't willing to buy the book then, I will contact the second person with, you know, the second highest bid. Is that English? I'm hoping that. And if there are any questions, as always, please leave a comment below this video and I will try my best to answer that. Everything I've just said you can also read in the description box of this video and you can also read it again on Instagram if um, something was not clear what I said here or if you have missed something or forgo forgotten something or whatever. So I wish you good luck if you want to join this auction and I'm really, really curious where this book will go because, as I said, this is something really special and I'm really happy to give this away and to give this book a new home. Okay, so if you are still here, I want to say thank you that you are still here. Because I really appreciate that you are watching my videos and that you are enjoying my content. And even if I'm in such a bad condition like I'm today, you are here. And that is just so, so wonderful. In both of the other videos of this 40k party, we had a little Louisa talk and I want to try to do such a talk today as well. I have told you that I have some topics in my head and especially in my heart that are really important to me and that I want to talk about. And I have decided to put those like Louisa talks, <laughs> someone has suggested to call that Louisa lyrics <laughs> that would be even better because you know LL that's really sweet um, but I want to talk about that in those videos which are belonging to this 40k party because well if you can get something in a giveaway or for free or something like that you're going to watch the video <laughs> and I thought I can reach the most people if I do that within this 40k party video series so let's talk about something that you probably might not think about so much. But I want to bring to you that this thing is important for everyone out there. It's not only for those who have a channel or who want to sell their work, but for everyone. Because, because it's like something that you either have in your mind and you understand it, or you don't think about it. And you think it's not so, so important. Yeah. So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about all of the things that are sold on 
for example, Timu or AliExpress. Perhaps you know about this problem that there are sold many, many stolen designs from other designers, other artists. I also have found some of my digital printable designs from my Etsy shop on AliExpress and in the meantime also on Timu. Perhaps you know that Timu is a little bit newer than AliExpress so they haven't found me perhaps. <laughs> Not so many shops there have found my work to be able to steal it but <clears throat> there are many shops who think okay that's a great design I take that and I resell it, even if that is, of course, not allowed. And you have seen in this book that I have just shown you, there are also a lot of die cuts used. Of course, this whole book is made with die cuts. Yeah, that is like the idea behind it, to use die cuts to create this Mundala book. And perhaps you have already realized that you can get like Tim Holtz die cuts on Timu and AliExpress. And I think there are many, many people out there who don't know that those are not the original die cuts by Tim, that, uh, that those papers that you can buy there are not my papers, even if you see my design or if you see his design for the die cuts. Some of you might not be aware that those are stolen designs. And that is something... I want to discuss. <clears throat> Obviously there are some people who like my stuff, who like Tim's stuff and there are many other designers out there who have the same problems and the I think the biggest problem or two of the there are actually two big problems for me with that. The first thing is that we as designers can't do anything against that. Yeah? If I find, for example, a digital printable paper from my own Etsy shop, my own design, my own work, the hours that I spend for it, on AliExpress, I can't really do anything against that. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm running my business by myself. I don't have um, people who can sit the whole day in front of a computer and find my designs on AliExpress or Timu. And the problem is that you have um, only one chance. <laughs> you can fill out a Chinese form and you can give all of your um, personal information to them and then they perhaps will remove the item from those platforms. But the next day there is the same seller with a new shop the shop has a new name and the item is there again. And I'm really shocked that it's not only a problem for small business owners like I am, but that it is also an issue for really, really big people like Tim Holtz, for example, or other big designers, other big companies. And the one thing is that those things are happening. But the other thing is how we, as crafty people, handle that. And I think there are many, many different opinions about that. There are those people who aren't aware of that. Yeah. For example, if you don't know... <clears throat> excuse me. If you don't know my papers, or if you... Let's take Tim as an example. If you don't know his designs, yeah, you can't have the whole index in your head um, you can't have a whole product catalog in your head and if you don't know them and if you then think on such a platform oh that's a nice stamp or that's a nice die cut set or that's a nice paper then you might probably buy that without the knowledge that it was stolen from another person that is the one thing the other thing is and that is something that makes me really angry. <laughs> to be honest, that makes me really angry. There are those people who exactly know what they are buying on those platforms like Timu or AliExpress. And there are even videos out there where the people say, oh, 
you can find this or this or that item very, very cheap on Timu or AliExpress and they encourage their viewers to buy it there. And that is something I can't understand. The first thing is that in a lot of countries in this world, it is not legal to buy those things and to import those things into your country. That is the first point. And the, the next point, and that is even more important to me, is the question, why the heck are you doing that? You are buying a stolen design. <laughs> you take that, you create something with that, in a video, you are in public and you are showing that in a video, you encourage the people to buy this stolen item. It's like, sorry when I say that so directly, it's like shitting on the desk of the designer on the one hand and on the other hand, and that is even more strange to me, I can't understand how and why you are doing that, I mean, probably not you, but the people, why are the people doing that? Those people who are doing it, why are they doing it? If they are sitting there, having a YouTube channel, spending their time creating something, and they want to be seen by other people with their own creativity, with their own projects, and they are using stolen designs by other designers. Can someone please explain that to me? I can't understand that. And I think it is really terrible that there are so many people who are doing that and talking about it, saying, oh, you can find really cheap craft supplies on Timu or AliExpress. They are showing those haul videos where they show what they have bought in those <clears throat> terrible shops and they even make like those um, videos where they compare the original product with the stolen design i mean with the product from aliexpress or temu they have that on their desk next to each other compare uh, they are comparing that in those videos and they say oh this is the same quality like the original product but it's like uh, really really cheap and then I think, what the heck? I mean, where are your eyes? Have you lost your eyes? Have you lost your brain? Or what is happening? Because no one, really, no one can tell me that the quality is the same. It can't be the same. It can't be the same. If you can buy a whole die cut set by Zizix and Tim Holtz, on AliExpress or Timu for like three or four euros, it can't be the same quality. I mean, how can it be the same quality? And I really can't understand <clears throat> how you can say that it is comparable and that it is the same quality because you, you must see that it is not the same quality. And the even more crazy thing is, how can you do that if you want to be seen by other people with your own projects and with your own things. I mean, what would happen if someone would come to such a person and steal a design from that person? <laughs> what would happen then? I mean, there are so many people out there who have an Etsy shop and who want to sell digital papers, for example, like I do. There are so many people out there who are trying to make a living from their small business and even the bigger brands are trying to make a living I mean look for example I, I stay in this example with Tim because that is something where I have the most knowledge about also the stolen designs that I have already seen but that's a thing for the other big brands as well of course even bigger brands they are trying to make a living they have people who work for the, those brands and those have to be paid. All of the production costs have to be paid. <clears throat> and all of the people who are designing this whole stuff have to be paid. 
and of course it's not so much effort and not so much money if you just take the design just steal it and then um, make it like your own and resell it of course that is really cheap and then you can take a really cheap material which is like shit in the end and then you can sell that for a really really cheap amount of money yeah but why why I can't understand it I really can't understand that and I had the feeling with especially the last video of the his 40k party that some of you have misunderstood me um, in the last video I have taken a comment which I got from a German viewer of my channel and I have discussed several things and I had the feeling from your feedback that you thought that I was like that my feelings have been hurt but why am I doing this why am I talking to you about those topics yeah I mean <laughs> there might be many people who think what is she doing I'm not interested in that why is she talking about this but I want to take my channel to say something good and to do good things yeah and not only with the projects I'm sharing I mean my main goal is of course to inspire you and I want that we all have fun together that is my main goal why I'm doing this yes I'm trying to make a living from this and I get my money from YouTube and my Etsy shop. Yes. And it is a really big danger when my designs are stolen and when they are um, sold on other platforms. Of course, that is really dangerous. But I mean, because I can uh, perhaps someday um, sit there and see my papers used from other people but not bought in my shop but bought on Aliexpress or um, Timu <clears throat> but the bigger problem is that my main goal is in danger somehow because I want to inspire you of course I want to have fun with you of course that is the main thing but if we don't talk about those things that are so bad like those stolen designs on those platforms where do we end up with our community and that was also the reason or yeah yeah that was the point of my discussion in the last video it's not always about feeling bad it's not always about being like in danger with with something but it's important to talk about it do you know what i mean so the last video wasn't actually so extremely bad for me I just had the feeling that I have to talk about it and when I sit here and um, talk to my camera I mean nobody is here yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm here alone with myself I have my my uh, sewing machine and my mediums here there I can talk to her yeah but what is that I'm not directly in contact with you do you know what I mean so I'm mainly talking to myself but I, I wish that there is a tiny chance that social media and especially YouTube can do something good in this community and that some eyes can be opened if some people open their mouth. Because those people who say, buy Tim Holtz die cuts on AliExpress, those people who say, oh, those stamps, I mean, they are made from silicone and not from red rubber, but you can buy them there. It's the same design. I don't have so much money, so I buy it there. Those people have to be stopped. It can't be that there are people who spend hours and hours and days and weeks and years of their life to create something beautiful and bring that to our community. And then there are those excuse me but idiots who like it's, it's like a flood on Insta uh, yeah on Instagram and even um, even more on YouTube they are flooding this whole is that a word flood water a lot of water which is coming the flood flooding is that the verb I'm hoping that this is the verb um, there are so many videos who tell you that you can buy that there and everything is okay and I have the opinion that those people have to be stopped and that is the reason why I'm talking about that and why I'm 
talking about those difficult topics during such a 40k party yeah because that is something that you would probably normally in your daily life you, you would not have that in your mind i mean why I, it's a normal thing yeah i don't want to say uh, you have to wake up and think about aliexpress and timu yeah but that are those things i mean you go through your crafty life you sit at your desk and you create something and everything is fine and you might not think about those things that are really really dangerous and really bad <coughs> against other people and i'm hoping that i can do a little thing with this video and also my other videos to make this whole community i i can't say I want to make it a better place. I, I can't say that. That would be really arrogant. But I want to use the chance that I can make videos and that I can reach a lot of people to try to bring something to your mind and think a little bit about those people who show you those stolen designs and who show you those hauls from those platforms like AliExpress and Timu. And my biggest wish with this video is that you perhaps open your mouth as well if you think oh that is right what Louise is saying there i mean it's not a question of if i am right or not yeah but if you think that you agree with my opinion i would be more than happy if you open your mouth and perhaps leave a comment below such a video because the more people we are the more people who want to do that, the bigger the chance is to stop those people who are doing those crazy bad things. And another thing is, if you see in your YouTube video suggestions, or you can even put it in, into the search bar, just write Temu Hall or write AliExpress Hall into the search bar of your YouTube uh, app and then look to the views which those videos have. It is, it is absolutely incredible. You can come up with a really special idea. You can put hours and hours of work into one video and the people are not interested or not, not that interested like you would expect they are. But if you then look to the views of such a haul video where they show you all of those stolen designs then look please look how much views those videos have and please have in mind that the most of those channels are earning money with their channel yeah i mean i earn money with my channel as well of course otherwise i couldn't do this whole thing but please have in mind they buy a stolen design and they get views for their video where they show that and they earn money with the video or actually not with the video itself but with those like ads in between but they get money for the shit they are talking about there have that in mind i think the best thing for me would be now to go back to my bed. Uh, but I still have another video on my schedule that I have to record. So uh, let's see how that can be done. I am hoping that you enjoyed this video. I am hoping that you perhaps think a little bit about those things I've talked about. And I'm hoping that we will see the next time. Have a very great and creative day. Bye-bye.